Hello chess lovers, Soren here and now let's together enjoy a magnificent game played by Robert Brigger. His opponent is Joaquin Camarena and this game was played in 1956 at the 57th USA Championship. In this game, Brigger had white pieces and he opened up with e4 against which Camarena chose the Nimtsovich defense, knight c6. This is a hypermodern opening in which black invites white to occupy the center of the board at an early stage with pawns in order to start undermining it later. Here we have knight f3, d6, d4, bishop g4 d5 and knight e5 black is intensifying the pressure on f3. As you can see the knight on f3 is pinned but instead of making a chicken move like bishop e2 or bishop b5 check, in here Robert Brigger delivered a surprising move and he captured on e5. With well, this move he is like demonstrating that the knight was not pinned and it can fly. Later a lot of games would be played with this line but in chess base this appears to be the first one so we can say that in 1956 Robert Brigger made a novelty. I really like this move and I would like to call this line the poisoned queen variation. Yes, let's call this the poisoned queen variation where white is sacrificing his queen on move 5. Black accepted the sacrifice and captured on d1 and now we have bishop b5 check. White is now exploiting the vulnerability of black king. c6 was played with d takes c6 and queen a5 check. By the way, capturing on e5 is not a good idea because black king can even get checkmated after giving this discovered check queen d7. White can go for a rook promotion yes i don't like a queen promotion let's go for a rook promotion and checkmate black king that's why after d takes c6 we have the most accurate queen a5 move here we have knight c3 white is both covering his king is protecting his bishop and is still threatening a move like c takes b7 check here black castled queen side and actually another alternative is playing a6 after which white can play b4, a very strong move. The idea of b4 is that now if you capture on b7 with the check then black has this a takes b5 move and the rook is protected. That's why you should go for this b4 move in order to lure away the queen from the a file. And now if queen takes b4 then simply c takes b7 check and white is winning and after b4 actually black should move back his queen on d8 but even this won't help black black will lose his queen and the end game is going to be winning white can also capture on f7 and then on d1 and then strengthen the pawn on e4 and then sooner or later black will also lose this pawn on b5 and this end game should be winning. Let's go back but in our game after knight c3 we have ks link queen side. Now comes knight c4, queen b4 and bishop e3 which is a mistake. In here it was better to play first a3 and after queen c5 play bishop e3. And now if queen h5 then this position was seen in a game of Kevin Spraget which I have analyzed earlier. We'll pin the link in the comment section, you can see what will happen next. For example, in here white can capture on b7 and then on d1 and white has a strong compensation. If we have a look, white has two pieces against a queen and also a pawn, right? Yes, white has a pawn and two pieces against a queen, but as black still needs to solve the development of his kingside pieces and as black king is exposed white has a huge compensation. Let's go back but in our game after queen before we have bishop e3. Bishop takes c2, a3 and a strange move by Camarena. Queen takes b5. Well it's not quite clear why not queen b3. Probably black overlooked this move and black is actually managing to save his queen Although after c takes b7 check, king b8 in order not to allow any possible knight a5 checks, bishop a6, 
the position is equal and this is going to be a very sharp battle but in our game after a throw f queen takes b5 black is giving back his queen but once white is winning that queen white is going to win yes white knight is also munching the pawn on a7 after which the second knight is coming white is simply horsing around this is a party of knights knight takes c6 white is winning one more pawn and then we have rook c1 a beautiful tactical shot of course and if we have a look at the position yes the storm is over and although white has only an extra pawn but this position is winning this powerful queenside post pawns can easily allow white to win the game f3 is on the board e6 king f2 knight d7 we have the exchange of knights on d7 and rook c1 once the rooks are double tops white can already think about penetrating black's camp rook c6 d5 which is a terrible move and now we have rook b6 check this d5 simply allows white to win on the spot king a8 king a7 could prolong black's resistance but after rook d6 discover check black is losing his rook in our game we have king a8 and now comes rook a6 check that king a8 allows white to checkmate in two moves and there it goes we have a checkmate on the board a very very impressive attacking game i think that how did we call it the poisoned queen variation was simply epic in the end as usual would like to ask you to solve a chess puzzle please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for white i will wait for your answer in the comment section when it comes to this game i hope that you enjoyed it greatly for more games consider subscribing to my channel also press the bell button to get notified about new uploads I will see you in my next video. Take care.